Hello, everyone. My name is Yang Chen. I'm from Georgia State University. Today, I'm going to give a presentation, and the topic is: Does imaging of time series help flare forecasting? To begin with, I'd like to provide some background information regarding the solar flare. Solar flares are sudden flashes of increased brightness on the sun. An example of solar flare is depicted on the right hand. Solar flares are logarithmically classified into five classes of A, B, C, M, and X, from weaker to stronger. Based on understanding flares, a coronal mass ejection, or CME, is released by a strong solar flare, which is a large explosion of plasma and magnetic field. CME can potentially cause geomagnetic storm with direct impacts on astronauts, satellites, and even ground-based technologies and power grids. Over the past two decades, researchers have implemented various methods to classify strong and weak solar flares. As we can see in the given table, it summarizes multiple approaches for flare forecasting. This table just gives us several examples, and it tells us that there are many perspectives to classify flares, and there is no single winner among these methods. Thus, this work wants to provide a new angle. We obtain the imaging of time series first, and then use these images with CN to do classification. This is indeed a novel way and worth to study. Before going into imaging algorithms, I want to discuss one issue first. Although there are various methods proposed, comparing the reported forecasting performances of these models is not feasible, and the reasons can be summarized as follows: First, these studies employ different sampling strategies. Second, they are not evaluated on the same public dataset. The third one is there exist minor or major differences in the problem formulation. For example, some studies work on regression task, while others will focus on classification issue. Even for the classification issue, it can be divided into multiple or binary classification problems. The last reason is this works apply different preprocessing strategies. In sum, each of these decisions. Changes the difficulty of the task, which makes the numerical comparison of the reported scores meaningless. To remedy these issues, a possible solution is to provide the same dataset and same preprocessing pipeline, which enables us to compare different models fairly. Therefore, a public benchmark dataset, namely SwanSF, is selected in this study. The goal is to provide shared experimental settings and comparable results. Next, I'm going to give some quick introduction about the data source. The full name of the SwanSF benchmark dataset is Space Weather Analytics for Solar Flare. SwanSF is a large collection of multivariate time series extracted from SHAP series. This dataset includes. Five temporally non-overlapping partitions over eight years, and each partition contains approximately an equal number of X and M classifiers. In this paper, we only work on first and second partitions. Specifically, the partition one is utilized for training the classifier, and partition two is used for evaluation. As we can see in the provided diagram. This dataset is suffer from the class imbalance issue. If we regard X and M as the minority class and CBN as the majority class, the ratio between the minority class and the majority class is around one over sixty. Such a significant imbalance in the dataset would affect any classifier by injecting a bias towards the majority classes. Therefore, the undersampling technique is necessary to be applied on the training dataset. In this undersampling strategy, the number of instances of the majority classes and the minority classes become equal, while the ratio of the individual classes are preserved from the original dataset. In addition, the two selected partitions are rescaled into range of minus one to one, which is required by 
the upcoming imaging algorithms utilized in this study. Moreover, missing values are imputed with linear interpolation. After introducing the data, I'm going to elaborate the primary part of this paper, imaging of time series. Two examples below show how to obtain imaging results with different types of time series. So for univariate time series, it will be converted into an image with applying imaging algorithms. I'm going to give more details later, but for now, we just need to have a general idea about this process. Next, for multivariate time series, we convert each time series into an image and eventually organize these images as a multi-channel image. There are already some studies that have utilized this idea, but with different data sets, for example, UCR data sets, or different domains, for example, the medical domain, and these studies have seen some improvements according to reported scores. So in this work, the most important part should be the imaging algorithms. The functionality of an um, imaging algorithm is to encode a univariate time series into an image with preserving temporal dependencies between observations. The main imaging techniques involved in this work are Gramian angular field and Markov transition field. Visualization results with different imaging algorithms are showed on the right hand. The reasons for converting time series into images is because we want to take advantage of the power of deep neural network, especially the CN-based architectures, which already have obtained huge successes in the image processing domain. Next, let's skip details about how the imaging algorithms works first and look at the experimental framework. There are three major parts, including the data preprocessing, model training, and evaluation. To properly evaluate the effectiveness of using imaging algorithms to deal with flare forecasting, we need to conduct a baseline classifier. Since CNN automatically extracts the features from images, in order to have a fair comparison, the baseline classifier should not depend on any manual feature extractions and should work on original time series directly. In our case, we select SVM, particular TSVC, as the baseline classifier. TSVC stands for Time Series Specific Support Vector Classifier, and it is an implementation of, of SVM that utilizes the dynamic time wrapping distance as the kernel. In our experiments, the architectures of TSVC and CNN have the comparable learning process in the mathematical concept. This condition enables us to pay more attention on the effectiveness of imaging algorithms, which makes the comparison fairly. Specifically, um, the partition 2 will be used for evaluating CNN and TSVC classifiers and report performances with TSS and HS scores. <clears throat> Here are the experimental results. First, we can see SVM-based classifier beats the CN classifier on TSS and HS size. TSVC can achieve 0 0.8 with TSS and barely reach 0 0.3 with HSS. Regarding imaging algorithms, MTF with LearnNet5 performs the best, but still have a large gap compared to the TSVC algorithms. The reason might be MTF measures the probabilities of transition between states of a time series. It may capture the patterns and fluctuations more distinctly than GF. In our experiments, we didn't see the expected performance with the GF algorithm. So here is a question. Can we figure out a way to improve the GF? With this question, we review the structure of current GF and we propose modified GFs with GSFR and GDFR. I will introduce more concrete details later, but in our experiment, we add these two new imaging algorithms into the mentioned framework and evaluate it again. From the new experimental results, 
we can see the modified GNSF gain a 120% improvements compared to the original GNSF from 0.21 to 0.48. And GSFR even have a more dramatic performance boost with HSS, about 440% increase from 0.07 to 0.38, which is better than the SVM-based algorithm. If you remember it, the HSS of TSVC is barely 0.3. The modified JADF also made some improvements with most cases, but not consistently and significantly. At last, I'll introduce how the Grameen Angular field works. Let's first look at the processing pipeline of the GF algorithm. Suppose a given input X is a time series with n time steps. Typically, the first step of GAF algorithm is to rescale x into a target interval, for example, minus 1 to 1. Here, we denote it as x tilde. In our study, this operation is finished in our preprocessing phase. The second step is to transform a rescaled time sequence into the polar coordinate system with provided equations. Since x tilde belongs to minus 1 to 1, so the phi i will belong to 0 to 180 degrees. There are two primary advantages in this transformation. First, the entire encoding process is bijective as r cosine function is monotonic. Second, the polar coordinate system preserves temporal dependency by using the radial coordinate r. However, in the GEF, it only uses angular coordinates to preserve temporal dependencies by constructing a matrix, and there are two forms, including GSF and the GADF. S stands for summation operation, and D stands for the difference operation. Take the GSF as an example. We can see it is a n by n matrix, and each element calculates the trigonometric summation or difference between two angular coordinates corresponding to the time steps of the original time series. In this way, two forms of GF matrix can be constructed. So once we have matrix representation, the matrix can be saved in image form, and images will, as inputs, transferred into CN-based models. But as we have seen, we didn't obtain excellent performance with current GF. So one possibility is for current GF formulation. Only the angular coordinates were utilized the radio information was not, but the radius are temporal information transformed from the original time series as well. So if we can find a way to encode radio information into the GSF, it might can achieve some improvements. With this idea, we proposed the modified Grammy angular field. The modified GF is based on assumption that is the time series observations closer to one another have stronger correlation than those temporally farther apart. For example, given a time series, the first time point and the second time point have a stronger correlation compared to the first time point with the third time point or other subsequent time points. Based on this assumption, we defend a weighting matrix W. I and G are the index of time steps. I minus G will be the distance between two points and final weight will be one minus absolute value of the distance over the total length of a time series. In this way, the closer time point have larger weights, while the further time points have lower weights. In this way, the radio information in the polar coordinates is utilized. Then the weighting matrix W will as parameters to multiply the original GSF or GDF matrix. Note that here is the element-wise multiplication. And here is an example. Suppose we have a three by three GSF matrix. According to the defined weighting matrix, we obtain W, which is also a three by three matrix. All elements can be calculated with the formula I provided. 
Finally, we can obtain the modified GSF matrix. Actually, we can see the weight matrix follow a linear form. So there is a linear transformation added onto the original matrix. Here are the visualization results of images derived by five imaging algorithms. There are three multivariate time series instances and top five selected parameters. Comparing the GSF and the GSFR, we can find GSFR have a stronger linear tendency by multiplying the weighting matrix. However, the GADFR doesn't have significant differences with the original GADF images. We still want to explore this in the future, but two conclusions can be safely inferred in our experiments. First, add video information into the construction of GSF and GADF is useful. At least it can provide more information for the CN-based classifiers. Second, different imaging algorithms might need apply different weighting metrics to obtain improvements. So that also can be explored in the future. So this study provides a new angle to approach the flare forecasting problem by converting multivariate time series into images. With adding radial information into original GSF, the modified GSF achieved a significant improvements in the classification task. With knowing the effectiveness of this new approach in flare forecasting problem, we are going to explore more appropriate weighting functions in the future. Here are the paper referred for making these slides. And thank you for your attention. Please feel free to let us know if you have any questions or advice about this work. Thank you so much.